Good morning! Today is another processing day at Free Home Farm and we are just about to get started. Today we are processing broiler chicken and a few of our roosters that we hatched. So when we hatch chicks, about 50% of them will be male and the males don't lay eggs. So when they start to crow and they start getting aggressive, they don't really add a lot to the flock. They eat a lot of food and they don't really contribute much so they go into the freezer. They're not real good for making, for baking or frying, but they make really good stock. So we will have some rooster stew this winter, or this fall and winter, from the, the roosters that we hatched and raised ourselves here at Free Home Farm with organic feed and access to pasture. Here are the broilers that we've brought up today. They are nine and a half weeks old and we processed a few the other day and they are averaging around three and a half to four pounds these are all female we ended up getting just not a straight run but a female run the females tend to be slightly smaller but that was okay for us the chicks were just a few cents cheaper and the females aren't quite as aggressive so we kind of like having the females they're a little easier to handle and then these are the roosters from our laying hens. And a couple of these are older. We're just gonna go ahead and process all the roosters we have here today because I still have some at home in the, uh, <laughs> the younger ones at home that aren't even old enough to crow. We don't know if they're male or female yet, but I'm sure there will be some males in there. So we'll pick out a rooster out of that bunch and let it be the protector of our flock for a while. So we'll go ahead and get rid of these guys. The white ones are leghorns. Um, we have the one in there, the loudest one in there is part barred rock and part something else. We, it looks like a muddy barred rock. And a couple of Easter eggers in there too. But once you get more than two or three roosters, it starts to affect the, lay, the laying hens because the roosters just pick on the laying hens all day and they're kind of aggressive and they fight so it can stress out the hens and it really does slow down our production of eggs so we don't want to have too many plus they're just freeloaders they eat and they don't really contribute much so these guys are going in the freezer today it has been 24 hours and we ended up processing 26 chickens yesterday and now I've brought them back to my house and we're in my kitchen and I am getting ready to package them up so I thought I would show you how we package them for the whole chickens I'm going to use poultry shrink bags so I get these on on Amazon but I've also seen some other websites that sell them but it is a plastic bag that will shrink when it's heated so we put the chicken inside first we wash off the chicken and check for anything that anything we missed or anything we need to do to clean up the chicken and then when it's ready to go in the bag we put it in the bag we zip tie it loosely and then we dip it in the hot water to shrink the bag and then into cold water just to cool it off real quick so I will show you how we do that and also any other parts that are not a whole chicken so if I decide to cut up a chicken if a chicken has a broken wing or a broken leg or ripped skin, I'll cut it up into parts and I will vacuum seal those parts. Also, we use, um, we use livers, necks, heads, uh, feet, all those extra parts we vacuum seal in a food saver vacuum sealer. So here are all the chickens that we processed yesterday. I have them in these coolers. They have been on ice for 24 hours. And if you would like to see the process of taking a live chicken and plucking and eviscerating and all that, we showed that in a video last week. So check our channel or I will put a link in the description below so you can go and see that part of it. Today we are just bagging them up. So they have been in ice water for 24 hours and we have found that in these large Coleman coolers or there's also some igloo coolers that are this size, I'm not sure how many gallons this is but this is the largest size you can get at like Walmart or those places we can fit about 25 chickens in the cooler 
with ice and water and we put in about 60 to 80 pounds of ice and fill the rest of the way with water and then we put the chickens in while we're processing but that gets very heavy so if you need to transport it anywhere what we have done is we divide it in half so we will put an empty cooler up say like in my van and then lift put about half of the chickens in with with fresh ice and water into one of them and then we can lift the second cooler into the van so that's just the way that Amanda and I have worked out that works for us because we usually bring it back to my house to package because I've got plenty of counter space and I've got all the tools here for for packing up the chickens. So I've got a, a, pan, a pot of hot water, my big canning pot. This is what I use for water bath canning. And then I've got another two or three gallon stock pot of cold water here. This will, we'll use that for the cool dip. And then lots of towels. I've got towels on the counters, towels on the floor, because this does get kind of wet, kind of messy. So let's see, chickens in here. And then I have parts in the sink waiting to be washed and sorted and bagged. So we save feet, necks, heads, livers, uh, hearts. So I will be bagging those up as well. Actually, I'll probably do those first. And then I can clear out the sink and have room to work with the other stuff. So let's get started. washed and laid out to dry. We want to get them as dry as possible before we put them in the vacuum seal bags because the vacuum sealer will suck any moisture out and into the tray, which is okay, it just doesn't seal very well. So I like to dry them out as best I can before I get started. So they're about ready. Uh, I don't want them to sit out too long because then they get kind of dried out and gross. I just don't want too much excess moisture. I'm going to use a kitchen scale here to weigh, and a, an and a bowl, to weigh out half pound portions. And I am actually going to mix the liver and the heart because when I cook, I'm usually making liver pate and I use the livers and the hearts and I just blend them all up together in the Vitamix while I'm making pate. So I always package mine together. A half pound is just about what I use in a recipe. So first thing I'm going to have to do is I am using a food saver and this one has the roll, it comes with a roll or I buy refillable rolls. So I can choose the size of bag. Now I'm going to make these kind of on the small side. So let me make a few bags and then I will pack these up and vacuum them. of necks 
and they were still kind of moist. So as you can see, it didn't seal very well and there is some liquid above the sealing line. So I'm just going to wipe that out with paper towel and then do one more seal just in case to make sure it doesn't get loose or so it doesn't get air in there. I just don't trust it when it sucks moisture through while it's sealing because it just doesn't quite get the right seal. Okay, that's better. So now there's two seals on here, but at least I know if that first one fails and starts to leak a little bit, the um, second one is a backup. So there is one pound of chicken necks. Great for making stock. Sometimes if I'm having trouble getting it to lay flat, if I put the scale right up under it, it holds it at just the right angle. And that will get it in there and get it flat. So I want to make sure I have it nice and flat where it's going to seal so I can make sure that it doesn't um, wrinkle up because that can get in, in the way of a good seal. While it's vacuuming, I try to push out any air that I can, like right here there was sort of a, a gap, so I'm pushing out the air through that gap, just trying to get it as tight as possible. finished up bagging all of the extra parts that are going to be bagged separately and now I can get started on the whole chickens. But before I get started I wanted to show you the difference between a broiler chicken and a rooster. So on the left here, this is a nine week old broiler chicken and I just weighed it and it weighs about four pounds and it has what well, we're used to seeing the nice broad breast that would be really good for cooking on their own or cooking as a whole chicken. This would be a meal for a whole family, maybe six people. Uh, with if you Once you cook it and cut it up, six people could eat a meal off of this easily. And then right next to it here I have a rooster that it still even has the neck on. We took the neck off of the broiler. But this rooster, you notice it doesn't have any breasts at all. Very skinny, very little meat there. This rooster was probably two years old, and I just weighed it as well, and it's just over two pounds. So the difference, you can see, the reason we get broiler chickens to raise for meat is they have more meat. So they just have meatier legs, larger breasts, and all around they're more tender because we process them at a very young age. The older the rooster gets, the less tender it is, it's going to be a little tough, 
There's not a lot of meat on its leg. You can compare them side by side. This is nice and fat and it's got lots of meat there. This is really long and skinny. So when they were alive, they looked pretty close in size. If you had them side by side, the rooster probably even looked bigger. But that was because he had a lot of feathers. So we still can use the roosters. We use them for stock. And uh, that's why I have this bucket of extra parts here because we also use feet and heads for stock. So I'm going to leave this neck on and I'm going to put the head and the feet inside the cavity of the rooster. And when we pack this up, I make a note on the front of it that it is for stewing. So we wouldn't necessarily use this for a meal, like a family dinner, but we would use it to make stock. And because it's got the feet and the head and everything, I can just put the whole thing in the stock pot and make rooster stew. There will be some meat, but it's the kind of meat that needs to cook slow and low, so it's better for the crock pot. The first thing I do is clean the carcass off really good, check for any extra feathers. Roosters tend to have darker feathers, so their uh, cuticles or the underneath the skin, you'll actually see some like marks, dye marks, or like pigment left over from the feathers. And it's a little harder to get those removed. It doesn't look so good in the bag when you see little dark feathers or dark hairs. Chicken actually, chickens have hair on their body underneath their feathers. So I just try to get all of that off under the running water, make it look good. Make sure it's nice and clean. Check to make sure the oil gland was removed. Um, then I feel around inside, make sure everything's, we got everything out of the inside. And this one looks good to go. Like I said, since this is a rooster, I'll go ahead and put a head and two feet in here because we'll use that for stock. And I just go ahead and put them inside the cavity because it's a nice hollow space. Now, if possible, I'd like to tuck the legs up underneath here to hold it all together, but with this rooster, I don't know if that's going to work because these legs are pretty long, so I guess that's fine. The neck, I'm going to tuck around, figure out the best way to tuck it. Sometimes it's on the side. There we go. Sometimes it's on the back. So it's going into a shrink bag, and I better get my water hot. So you need water that is almost boiling. And this is going into the shrink bag. Make sure it's centered and everything is tucked in like it's supposed to be. And I will go ahead and loosely put a zip tie around just below the feet, or just above the feet, I guess. Okay. Now while I wait for the water to get heated up, I'll go ahead and bag a couple more. Just on the brink of boiling. 
the instructions say between 180 and 200 degrees. And I just, I don't even measure anymore. I used to measure, but now I just go, when it's starting to steam like this, it's just right. So I've gotten all six of the roosters bagged up and a zip tie on the top loosely. I'm going to center the chicken in the bag and try to slide that zip tie down as far as I can get it. So this is really hot. I just need to dip it in and the bag will shrink around the chicken. And once I think that it's shrunk enough and gotten enough air out, I'll pull the zip tie tight. So here goes. Trying to do this as fast as possible so we don't cook the chicken, but we want to get the bag to shrink. Okay, there we go. And get all the sides. And I think that's good. So now into the cold water so it can cool off. Now I'll just leave that in the water as I do the next one. these roosters shrink wrapped nice and tight and now I'll just come back and snip off the zip tie and if there's excess plastic hanging off the end I'll cut that off too it's just regular scissors and for our records I always keep track of the weight of all of our chickens so I'll weigh each of these and write the weight on it the date and the weight on the package with sharpie before they go in the freezer I got the roosters bagged up, labeled up. I put prices on them just in case we want to sell these later because sometimes we'll use them for bartering or we'll just sell a few excess that we have. So I have them on the top shelf of the freezer. I like to space them out really well until they get completely frozen because I want to make sure the cold air gets all the way around them and freezes them as quick as possible. And then once they're frozen solid, I'll move them down below and you can see there's previous processings where I just uh, move it farther down in the freezer and those are all frozen solid so they're good to go. I just keep these kind of loose until they get cold. We want them to get as cold as possible because they have been sitting out for a few minutes while I was going through the packaging process. So that's six down, I have about 20 more to go. And I have found that doing them about six at a time is just, just the right amount for me to be able to get into a good rhythm and get them cleaned and bagged and dipped before they get too warm. So I will go ahead and start on the broilers. I'll do another set of six and then clean everything up and then do another set of six and just kind of do that uh, three or four more times until all the chickens are in the freezer. Here is one of our good sized broilers. I'm getting ready to bag it up and shrink wrap it in a shrink bag. And I just pretty much look for any feathers, if there's any extra feathers sticking, sticking out. Um, that's the good thing about broilers is that they are white. So if, even if there are feathers, they're not real noticeable. And once you cook it, they're, they pretty much get um, cooked into the skin or else they burn up on the grill or whatever. It's not a big deal if there's feathers, but I just feel for feathers. Any extra skin, sometimes there's little bits of skin that you can rub off just in general. Clean it up. And see, here's a couple feathers right here. Pull those. Um, 
Here's a trick that I learned from my friends at East West Farm is I'm going to make a small incision right here on this flap of skin and then I can tuck the legs in and it makes it look so much neater in the packaging but then also just if you go to bake it it holds it all together and makes it a nice presentation for the table as well. So I just made a small slit uh, when we're processing, we cut as, as far down as we can around where the pelvic bones are so that we have extra skin here. So I'm just going to tuck the legs in here and then that just holds everything together real nicely in the bag and when you're cooking it. And this flap of skin will cover up the, the foot joints here and uh, keep those from drying out when if you're baking it. And that's pretty much it. This one looks good. This is a nice big one. So I'm going to bag it up and I'll do probably about six more broilers in this batch and then get the get these in the freezer. Anytime we are processing a large amount of chickens, we'll have some that get damaged in the process. Like this one, for example, has a broken wing, and this probably happened after the chicken was already dead, but probably in the plucker, because the plucker spins them around. And if the wing, the wing tip gets caught, it can dislocate the wing. Um, I also noticed that they, when we were cutting to, dis to get the crop out, the skin got cut back pretty far right here, so this just isn't, as a whole, isn't going to make a great presentation um, baked or grilled. So we are going to cut it up into pieces, and I'll show you how I do that. If we are processing and we realize that a bird is damaged, like, like the wing here was broken, we could tell that while we were processing, we go ahead and leave the neck on, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the breasts, the legs and probably the wings and then what's left is the carcass, the uh, back and the ribs and all that which makes good stock which we use with the neck anyway so we just leave the neck on. So the first thing I'm going to do is take off one of the legs. So I start by spreading the legs <laughs> and you can see there's a gap here right between the muscle so I'll just cut right here. It really helps to have a sharp knife. Um, you really want to have a sharp knife when you're cutting any kind of meat because if not, it can slip easily. You're not going to get a clean cut. But anyway, the knife just helps. So I loosen that up. And I'm trying to leave as much skin as possible because when, we're, when we bake this or grill this, this needs to be covered with the skin to keep the, the meat moist. So I cut that gap. Now I'm going to dislocate the bone. You can tell that there is the thigh bone right here and it attaches to like the pelvis or whatever's in here for the chicken. So I'm going to first dislocate that so the leg bone actually pops out of the socket. And now I can use my knife to cut right along this line and it'll be a nice clean cut. And it'll go right between the joint of that bone. trying to keep as much of the thigh meat on there as possible. All right, so here we go, a thigh and a leg. And if you wanted to, you could cut it one more time in this joint and just have the drumstick and the separate thigh. For my family, that my kids will eat a thigh and a leg in one sitting, so we'll, I'll keep this connected. 
And then once I've um, cut it off, I will rinse it and then put it in with the rest of them. I am parting out several chickens at one time so that when I'm done cutting up the parts, I can package them sometimes with four or six in a package and that way it's enough for a whole meal or if I have specific like wings I do in a huge package because when we have wings it's usually a party so we're feeding lots of people. So I'm doing the exact same thing on the other side with the other leg cutting the skin free and now I'll dislocate that joint and then cut along this line along the body. There we go. Another good leg. Okay, now I'm going to take the breast part off. Now I can uh, get the skin out of the way. We'll keep the skin attached to the backbone, but I don't need it on the breast, so I'll just go ahead and peel that off. There is a breastbone right down the middle here, so I'm going to try to bring my knife just along one side of the breastbone to start to cut away the breast meat from the bone. Trying not to leave any meat on the bone, or as little meat as possible on the bone. Just sliding right along the side there. And underneath the breast is the tender. So you will notice that the tender comes loose first and I could actually take the tender completely out if I wanted. I'm going to leave it connected for now because I think we'll grill these up together. Breast and the tenders at the same time. Okay, now I've reached the ribs. So I'm just trying to cut that connective tissue right along the ribs and then once I get all the way there's actually a line here you can see where the breast is connected to the body so I'm just gonna cut right along that line and I'm trying to get as much breast meat as I can without cutting into the wing because I still like to have wings so there we go there's a breast and a tender now there is some connective tissue here on the tender, a, t a tendon or a ligament or something. So I like to get that. Um, that's a tough piece that is hard to chew. So I like to go ahead and cut that out. Now, and just slide right along there. There we go. So I don't have to do it later while I'm cooking. So I'm definitely not an expert at this. I've, I'm sort of self-taught in this. So I'm sure there's probably a better way to do this than what I'm doing, but this is what I've been doing for several years and this works for me. So I'm just showing you my technique. There may be something I'm doing wrong here, so I'm sure I'll get comments in the below telling me a better way to do this. And that's a pretty good sized breast. Right. Same thing on the other side. Just gonna start right along the bone. And I definitely uh, did not do this very neatly the first time around. So don't think, if you mess up your first time trying this, don't think that you did anything wrong, it just takes a little bit of practice to get a feeling of how this is supposed to go. I was with the whole process, kind of takes time to get get a feel for everything. And I know in in uh, factories where they where they process chicken and package for grocery stores, they're much, much faster than I am, but that's okay. I know this is good food and I can't get this anywhere else, so I take my time and I do it right. 
open up just in case. Okay, so what we're left with is the back and the wings. Now this wing is broken, so maybe I can just leave this. This isn't really, well, I'll take the bottom part of it, I guess. This wouldn't really make a great chicken wing uh, to eat, just like it is, so I don't know. I guess I'll save this part, but I will leave the rest attached to this back and it'll go it, it won't be wasted it'll be used to make stock so here's the other wing and you can see the shoulder of the bird and I'm just gonna cut right around that part right around the curve of the shoulder and again I need to go in between the joint so I'm going to dislocate that joint right there so that I won't be cutting through bone I'm just gonna be cutting the flesh and the skin around it and then straight through the middle of the joint. Cut the connective tissue to get it off of there. There we go. Okay. So, I didn't learn this until I had been raising chicken for years, a couple years, that when I when you go to a wing restaurant and you have the drumette and you have the wing, it actually all comes from the chicken's wing. So, this part is the drumette here. It looks like a tiny leg. I always thought they were just little chickens with little legs, but this is one part of the wing and this is the other part of the wing and they usually cut this wing tip off so you never see this in a restaurant. But that's the two parts, the drumette and the wing. So everything else that's left is there's a little bit of meat clinging to the bones but then you've got lots of meat along the spinal cord and along the back some dark meat back here all this is still good you're not really gonna like grill it up or make a sandwich with it or something but it's great for making stock so I will save this along with the neck I'll just leave the neck attached and save that for later and we'll make stock out of it Finally, I'm done. I feel like that took all day, but the freezer is now stocked with chicken. That is everything I packed today, plus some more down here, and there was some from a couple days ago down below. So that took just about all day <laughs> to do 26 chickens and cut them up into parts and and shrink wrap them and all that but it's worth it because this is the meat that we're going to eat for the whole next year basically we have a few still out in the pasture it won't take too long to do the last few of them and get them packed up and in the freezer so i hope you enjoyed watching this video and the past videos if you haven't seen them go back and look there are there's a series of like 10 videos and i started from the first day when the chicks came in the mail and all the way up to packing and freezing. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed it. You can check us out on Facebook or go to our website, freehomefarm.com. And, of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel and keep watching. Thanks!